Sharpness is an important stat for all Blade Master weapons since it directly affects how much damage you deal. Having a higher level of sharpness means having a better damage multiplier, which means you'll deal more damage. Ideally, you want to maintain your weapon's best sharpness in order to maximize your damage output. Now, there are three armor skills that help with this, namely Razor Sharp, Protective Polish, and Master's Touch. These are good skills because they all preserve sharpness and help prevent your weapon from dropping to a lower sharpness level. However, the Sword and Shield has its own innate way of preserving sharpness, making these three skills unnecessary to build for. You see, Sword hits cost 1 point of sharpness, and since the Sword and Shield hits relatively fast, your sharpness will deplete very quickly. However, Shield hits cost no sharpness, and as you'll see later, you'll be using the shield a lot. So when we begin talking about attacks and combos, we will also consider how much sharpness the attack or combo costs, since again, we want to maintain our best sharpness in order to maximize damage. If an attack costs too much sharpness, then it's most likely not worth using most of the time. Keep this concept in mind, as sharpness cost heavily dictates what attacks and combos we use. For the first slot, we can choose either the Hard Basher combo or the Drill Slash combo. Hard Basher is the default skill, and it's really good. It's 3 hits with the shield followed by Spinning Reaper, meaning that this combo only costs 1 sharpness. The shield hits also deal a decent amount of stun damage, which makes this great for KOing the monster. The downsides of the Hard Basher combo are that the shield hits do not deal any elemental or status damage, and it deals less damage than the Lateral Slash combo. However, the lateral slash combo costs 4 sharpness and deals no stun. Also, the lack of element or status in shield hits isn't a big issue since we can just pick a raw focus sword and shield instead. So I think the positives outweigh the negatives here. The alternative for the hard basher combo is the drill slash combo, which you unlock by crafting a bunch of unique sword and shields. I'm not sure what the exact number is since different sources say different things, but just keep crafting until Itsushi gives you the skill. Anyways, the Drill Slash combo is also good. It does about the same damage as the Lateral Slash combo, and it's great at dishing out a lot of elemental or status damage. However, it does cost 5 sharpness, which means that this combo is really only usable if you are either running sharpness management skills like Protective Polish, or if the Sword and Shield has a lot of its best sharpness such as the Ibushi Sword and Shield. Overall, I think the Hard Basher combo is the better choice over the Drill Slash combo, but with the right setup and matchup, Drill Slash can sometimes be the better option. On the second slot, we have Advancing Slash vs Sliding Slash. Advancing Slash is a simple attack to close a bit of distance. It does grant flinch free for a few seconds, but it's not that huge of a benefit when flinch free is so easy to slot in. The only real downside to Advancing Slash is that you are forced to perform a Rising Slash before you can perform Hard Basher which makes Advancing Slash not the best at maintaining sharpness, and I don't recommend using this move very frequently. Now, Sliding Slash you unlock by reaching 3 star village or 2 star hub. It's also an attack to close distance, but it's much more complicated. If the first hit connects, then you'll automatically perform Scaling Slash. From there, you can perform Jumping Slash, the Poverty version of Falling Bash, or Falling Shadow. Now one thing I want to point out is that Scaling Slash has iframes, but it can be pretty tricky to execute in a real hunt, so I don't really recommend using Scaling Slash to dodge attacks when there are better options. And there's still more to Sliding Slash. If you wish the first attack, you can press A while you are still sliding to perform a Jumping and Rising Slash, which sends you pretty far. If you whiff the first attack but don't press A, you do a second hit, which you are forced to follow up with Chop. Overall, I think Sliding Slash is just too awkward of a move to pick over Advancing Slash, but it doesn't really matter since both options aren't that great anyways, and you won't be using either of them that much. For the final slots, we have either Windmill or Metsu Shardigeki. Windmill costs 2 wirebugs to perform and has a recharge rate of 10 seconds per wirebug. It's a relatively large area of effect attack that does decent damage, but it's 7 sword hits making this move very bad for preserving sharpness. However, the main benefit of Windmill is the absurdly generous amount of iframes you get from this move. It's kind of overkill in my opinion. Our alternative to Windmill is Mechu Shardikeki, 
which you unlock by completing the 4 star hub quest, Study the Sword and Shield. I highly suggest that you complete this quest ASAP, because Mechu Shurigeki is insane. It costs 2 wire bugs to perform and has a slightly longer recharge rate of 13.5 seconds per wire bug. It's a powerful uppercut with a shield, which you can follow up with either Plunging Thrust or the good version of Falling Bash, which is the better option pretty much all the time. However, the beginning of this move has a guard point, and if you manage to activate it, you'll perform an upgraded version of Meju Shortigeki that deals 3 additional shield hits and greatly increases the stun damage of the first hit. Not only does this deal a ton of damage, but it also deals a ridiculous amount of stun. In fact, you can KO most monsters instantly simply by performing Meju Shortigeki on the initial roar. We'll talk more about this move later. But for now, just know that this move is extremely good and there's absolutely no reason why you should choose Windmill over this. The backstep is one of the most important techniques of the Sword and Shield you need to master. It has 20 invincibility frames, meaning that it's a great move to dodge attacks. It's one of the two ways to access Perfect Rush. Let's talk about all the different ways to perform the backstep. The first way to perform backstep is to input back on the left stick and the A button after almost any attack. This is great to use when there's an incoming attack while you're mid combo, but can't outspace the attack with a roll. A more useful way to perform the backstep is to input back and A while guarding. If you are struggling to execute this, it helps to press A first and then immediately afterwards input back on the left stick, which will prevent accidental guard slashes. Now you don't need to be holding guard for that long in order to perform the backstep. In fact, you can do this so fast that it looks like you never guarded at all. So in a sense, you can perform the backstep from neutral. It's much easier to iframe attacks and is a quicker way to access perfect rush using this method. The final way to perform the backstep is to press A during a roll, which is useful for repositioning for perfect rush. However, during a forward roll, you can input a direction on the left stick while pressing A to backstep in that direction. It's the flashiest way to perform the backstep, but it's still rather useful for the repositioning. Once again, the backstep is a very important technique of the Sword and Shield that no one else seems to emphasize that much. I highly recommend that you practice all these different methods of performing the backstep, since it will greatly improve your hunts. Every weapon has three different ways to unsheath, the sword and shield being no exception. Press X while the left stick is neutral to simply unsheath, which is really not that useful. Press X while holding a direction on the left stick to perform either advancing slash or sliding slash as a draw attack. However, as I mentioned before, neither attack is really that great, since both effectively cost 2 sharpness for mediocre damage. The final and most useful way to unsheath the sword and shield is by pressing ZR to guard. Now you might be asking, wait a minute, how can this possibly be the most useful way to unsheath? Well first of all, let's talk about what moves we can do while guarding. Press X while guarding to perform rising slash, which is quick and leads straight into hard basher or drill slash. Press A while guarding to perform guard slash. This attack isn't that good since the guard point won't work if you take too much knockback, and without any levels of guard, you'll pretty much always take too much knockback. Not to mention that Mechi Shorty Get Game basically makes Guard Slash obsolete. We already talked about how we can perform the backstab while guarding in the previous chapter. Press B while guarding to roll. Press Y while guarding to use a selected item. Press ZL and X while guarding to perform Falling Shadow. Press ZL and A while guarding to perform Mechi Shorty Geki. Now, as I already mentioned in the previous chapter, you don't have to hold guard for very long to perform these moves, and instead can perform them almost instantaneously. So combine this with the fact that we can guard to unsheath, and we now effectively have more options for unsheathing. The best unsheathing options are the backstep, since it's great for iframing through attacks and it basically makes perfect rush a draw attack, and the option I like to use the most is the roll, since we can simultaneously close distance and unsheath while allowing us to immediately follow up with hard basher or drill slash. Be careful when trying to use hard basher or drill slash after a roll though, since pressing A too early will cause you to backstep instead, so it's best to practice delaying the A input.
Falling Shadow costs 1 wire book and recharges in about 6 seconds. If you land the first hits, then you'll automatically perform a scaling slash, from which you can follow up with the good version of Falling Bash. It's not bad, but it's really only meant for quickly approaching the monster from a great distance, not something you should spam. If you don't want to commit to the scaling slash, then you can stop your momentum quickly by performing a plunging thrust. The plunging thrust itself does decent damage, but it does cost 3 sharpness, so keep that in mind when considering landing this move or not. Now we already talked about how amazing Mechu Shardigeki is. It's imperative to learn what monster attack you can counter, as you'll be greatly rewarded if you manage to land a powered up Shardigeki on the head of the monster. Knowing which attack you can counter will take some experience, but watching speedruns can help you learn which attacks to counter as well. However, you don't necessarily need a monster attack to activate the counter. The explosion of a barrel bomb will also work. An easy setup for this is to place a large or mega barrel bomb with CR and Y. Press A to do a lateral slash, and press ZL and A to shortigeki the bomb. This is great for dealing a ton of damage when the monster is down, but there are a few things to keep in mind. Keep an eye on your wire bugs before you attempt this, as if you don't have two available wire bugs, then... Yeah, make sure you have two wire bugs. If you're too far forward or aren't facing the right direction when attempting this, you most likely fail at countering the explosion. Sometimes the monster could simply push you out of position, but a less obvious way you can be too far forward involves the slope of a terrain. If you are facing upslope or sideways on the slope, you'll successfully counter the bomb just fine. However, if you are facing downslope, you'll likely fail, and a slope can be as subtle as this. If you think you'll fail because of a downslope, then you can simply reposition yourself to be more behind the bomb before you try countering it. Now to make this technique even stronger, consider bringing the skill Bombardier to increase the barrel bomb damage. You can also eat for Dango Pyro to upgrade large barrel bombs to mega barrel bombs, which is great for people like me who don't feel like farming scatterfish. What combos you should use depends on two things, what the monster is currently doing, and what kind of sword and shield you are using. Here's a flow chart that considers both variables. Note that this chart is meant for casual players, and it's not meant to be some sort of speedrunner guide, which is a completely different topic. Anyways, let's talk about the chart. If the monster is attacking, then your priority should be to avoid it by either outspacing the attack or by backstepping through the attack. Then you want to consider how much time you have to punish the monster, hence the large and small opening categories. However, if the opportunity presents itself, you should try to counter attack with the Metri Shardigeki. This is the same no matter what kind of sword and shield you are using. Now let's discuss the rightmost column first. If you're using an element or status sword and shield, then you'll want to use Drill Slash over Hard Basher. The Ibushi sword and shield and the High Ninja sword using Bludgeoner will also want to use Drill Slash. But in any case, you'll pretty much just want to spam Drill Slash as much as possible, since not only does it deal good raw damage, but it's also the best combo for dishing out elemental or status damage. Now if an opening is too short, then you may not want to go for Drill Slash because you'll likely overcommit and get hit. In that case, then Lateral Slash into Return Stroke will be the best combo here since it does decent damage for how low committal it is. But in general, Unga Bunga Drill Slash is the way to go. Keep in mind that if you're building for Drill Slash, then you want to use a Sharpness Management skill like Protective Polish, unless you're using the Bushi Sword and Shield or the High Ninja Sword. Moving on to the middle column, we have our low sharpness sword and shields like the Tigrex sword, which doesn't have a lot of its best sharpness. In this case, we want to spam Harm Basher almost exclusively. Nothing else is really worth it here because we don't want to use up too much sharpness that we don't really have, and Harm Basher has the best damage to sharpness cost ratio outside of Meiju Geki, so Hard Basher spam it is. And finally, for the leftmost column, we have our medium sharpness sword and shields like the Rathian sword and shield, which in my opinion is the most versatile of the three. Like the low sharpness options, you can still spam hard basher, but if you do that, then you'll most likely have some sharpness to spare that you could have used for valuable sword hits. Now if you have a large opening, then hard basher is still the way to go here since the KO damage is always valuable, 
and even though we can afford more sword hits, using them up here isn't very optimal. However, if you have a small opening where you can't fit the entire hard basher combo, Lateral Slash Return Stroke will be better here since it deals more damage than the first two hits of Hard Basher. And finally, if the monster is down, you will either use Hard Basher, Perfect Rush, or a combination of both. Ideally, when you're using Perfect Rush, you want to use the X button finisher rather than the A button finisher, i.e. Spinning Reaper. But if you think you won't be able to connect with the X button finisher, then finish with the Spinning Reaper instead. Now the very last tip I have for you is how to infinitely loop Hard Basher or Drill Slash. One obvious method to do this is to roll out a Spinning Reaper and use Hard Bash or Drill Slash again. But another method to loop these combos is to perform a Rising Slash after the Spinning Reaper by pressing X while holding ZR. Then use Hard Basher or Drill Slash right after using Rising Slash. This method of looping these combos is best for damage, but because we are using Rising Slash, it will consume an extra point of sharpness. So for low sharpness sword and shields, you may want to consider the roll method of looping hard basher instead. That's all I have for you on this sword and shield tutorial. If you have any questions or if there's something I missed, feel free to leave a comment below. But in any case, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.